streams never end. So I'm going to do an impromptu replay review as soon as I get the replays. Alright, let's see. I want here and I want Martink. Well, that's why we're doing replay reviews. Maybe we can... Folder... Play review. Hold on a bit. I'm a little bit slow with getting these zip files open. Okie doke. Replay review. Do, 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 do. Let's start with Dada. Game one. Regular. Oh, uh, yeah, that looks weird. CPL alive. And just, can we hide the overlay? Yeah, let's hide the overlay. No, we don't want to hide the overlay. We want to hide the scoreboard. There we go. Oh, that's, that's a little bit better. All right. Oh, we can have you up here. Let's see what you go for, and let's see what Phoenix goes for. Phoenix without the O. It's like a Latin spelling, I feel like, or something like that. Overlord. So we know it's not going to be a nine pool. What's our friend over here going for? Also Overlord. Dada says he was trying to watch the eggs in this replay, in this game, in this first game. So we've got, I think that was like a 12 pool here and also 12 pool, yeah. So pretty much the same build. Dada is faster on building stuff, gas, uh, slower on the gas. Phoenix. Faster, faster on the hatch, but has less drones. And Dada is at his optimal drone count right now. Just make links now. So just from this opening, we see that they were doing the same builds and you are in a better position, Dada. You have two more drones. I would, I would not make any more drones, to be honest. I would just make lings, non-stop lings, and get to Spire. There's no need to overthink it. Let's just make lings to not die to lings, especially since it's the same build. Did you make link speed? I think you didn't make link speed, right? You went straight layer and he went link speed. Yeah. So he's going more into like link heavy build. Making an overall, you missed an overlord? No, wait, uh, he's white. He's making an evo chamber. Alright, I mean, you over-droned, right? You over-droned, you have 400, 300, you got supply blocked. Um, you didn't make an Overlord at 16. Overlord is always at 16. You gotta watch for that. Every single matchup. ZVT, ZVP, ZVZ, gotta get the Overlord at 16. 
the only time you want to get the Overlord at 16 is you know you're going to lose Lings. Like, the Lings are at your base, and you're absolutely sure you don't need to make an Overlord, because then, like, the additional Larva for the Lings can make a difference. But in this situation, you should have made the Overlord at 16. And you also overdroned. Um, one, like, one thing you can look for here, you should try to get your Overlord to go, go back and forth between his main and his nat. You see that he doesn't have a lair, and you see that he wasn't mining gas. So from the fact that he wasn't really mining gas, he was only mining one on gas, you can infer that he's not going to go Muta. He wants to kill you with Lings. So just reading his build here, make a Sunken, just play super safe, delay your Spire, make a shit ton of Lings, get lit, Link Speed. That's what you can infer from his build. What's he getting this for? Like, even now, you're not in a bad spot. You see how many links, how many links does he have? Do you see this? Yeah, you see he has more links than you. So that's, that's the other thing that hurt you, is you didn't have link speed. So you play really risky this way by not getting link speed. If you get layer, you need, your next 100 gas needs to go into link speed. And the other thing is, you take, with 12 pool, you take one drone off gas after you start uh, layer and link speed. And you don't put it back on gas until after Spire is done. Again, it th probably the Overlord block here hurt you. All right, let's let's think about because we like we need to learn how to adapt, right? People make mistakes all the time, but I think you could have still recovered from this because you're as rich as hell. You have 15 drones; he has nine. Um, you missed Overlord twice. You got Overlord blocked twice. You got your larva building up. Make Sunkins. Just like the first time you, the Overlord blocked you and you saw that like the trade was even and then you go over here and you see he has a little bit of lings left make sunkins make like three sunkins who cares if it's not like perfect you're gonna survive with three sunkins you're gonna survive and it doesn't matter if you've got a overlord block because you just freed up three drones four sunkins and you had 400 minerals a little bit before this so you have the money for sunkins and you have the money to make lings so that's how we adapt to getting Overlord blocked in this situation. Other things I can point out here, really bad Spire placement and second Creep Colony placement. Well, first Creep Colony placement. Um, probably a little bit hard to do this when you're stressed and under attack from Lings, but if we were not stressed and under attack from Lings, you want to put the Spire over here in this position to set up a SimCity and your sunks should be over here. Even sometimes I see people put a sunk here, a sunk here, and their spire way back here. So it's like super tight. Then you can drill to the gas and then you got two buildings kind of protecting this back sunk here. For this guy, I don't know why he made this Evo. I think he was f scared of Fast Muta. Let's head into the second game. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. You're having off day. I have off days. Everyone has off days. 
that's why you build in these adaptations. When you're having an off, off, off day, you can try to get by with adaptations. If you're having a bad day and your head hurts, what do you do? You take, a, take an ibuprofen, right? That's your adaptation. Your ibuprofen, some coffee gets you through the day. Yeah, not, it wasn't happening, so make some sunkins next time. Jinjin, thank you for the raid. Let's see what these... Uh, got nine pulled down here. No stress games. <laughs> this is just replay re for anyone joining. This is just replay review. So you got a, a eleven pool over here. So Phoenix is just uh, winging it over here. Phoenix two four seven zero. Very early drone. He's also not... Because he's making the pool earlier, and because he's making this hatch earlier, he doesn't have the money for lings. And... He has less drones than he should have, so... Yeah. Let's see what you're going for. Going for pool. Okay. Once the link speed starts, take one drone off gas. Right? With nine pull speed. Once your layer starts, take another drone off gas. So you only have one drone on gas. This gives you economy to be able to deal with other stuff. So this this is important with both twelve pull and nine pull. You gotta you gotta micro your drones to be able to deal with, well, to be able to have money for adaptations, pretty much. Oh, I remember this game. I know exactly what my feedback's gonna be. So this is good. This is, this is good too. Really good micro up to this point. You, you you came in, he was not prepared, you sniped one ling over here, you sniped a ling over here, so now you have a ling advantage. I think you only lost one ling. You have a ling advantage, this is very good. Your speed's gonna be done soon. Now you have a huge ling advantage. Really good ling micro here. Really good ling micro here, uh, yeah. Now, now is where I remember you over micro your lings. This is where you lose it. So if you're going nine pool speed versus 12 pool, you have to be super, super, super careful with your lings. If you see this setup that you're seeing right now, you can't run past the drones and target the lings. You need to target the drones. You have speed. His speed isn't done. So what are your options here? Let's zoom in here. What are your options? Your worst option is trying to surround these links. That's because these drones are going to be getting free pot shots off. And drones do 5 damage. Links do 5 damage. This is like an additional 3 links here. And they have range. So they don't even need to get close to you. What do you do instead? You look for better targets. You pick him apart with speed. You had an amazing, amazing first set of Ling Micro. It was... Yeah, you, you don't know what to do with it. I'm telling you what to do with it right now. So you keep targeting the hatch to force him to make it. The hatch is almost dead. It's got 137, man. This is like the dream opening for nine pool speed verse 12 pool so what do you do you're targeting the hatch and you're forcing him to make a mistake 
he can't reposition because he doesn't have speed yet. You have speed. It just kicked in. You target this drone. When you target that drone, now you can target these two lings. Unless this stuff repositions over here. If this star starts repositioning over here, then you back off. If this stuff repositions over here, run your links into his main and kill these drones. All the same time, keep on, keep on going 3SH or 4SH, whatever your hatch is on. Um, yeah, your layer should have been started, right? So I, this is kind of hectic to start it. So make sure you have your hatch and you have your layer up upgrade hotkey memorized so you can just do 3SH, 4SH, or well, sorry, 3SZ, 4SZ, or whatever your hotkeys are, and then also 3S, my layer is on Q, so 3Q three, three to get your layer started. Let's slow this down to slow, right? The reposition here, so it's still fine. This is still fine. You're trying to go into his main. Now you you go and engage. This is you should have pulled back and started targeting the hatch again. You don't have to fight here. He has to defend here. You're you're you have to be patient. He is scrambling to defend. He doesn't want to lose his hatch. So go back and kill this hatch now. You can easily reposition this and finish this. But you come in here, you come into a little concave, a little bottleneck, and you just get wrecked by the drones. These, like, these little zergling fights versus 12 pool are really important. And if he's set up well, like if he's got his lings and his drones right behind that set up well, don't engage. Stop making lings. So what do you do with 9 pool speed and 9 pool layer versus 12 pool to when you can't do any damage? Let's talk about that. So let's adapt to that situation. That's why what I like to do is I like to make no more than 8 lings and then see how things play out. If I make 8 lings and things don't go well for me, Every other larva after that point goes into drones. Get my lair up, get my spire up. You can't expo versus 12, 12 hatch or 12 pool unless it's a hidden expo, but still you probably can't expo because you're going to need the money for sunkins. Because if you only make eight lings, if you only need 10 lings and you don't do any damage, you don't kill any drones, the next thing that's going to happen is his speed is going to finish and he's going to have a lot more larva than you, and the lings are going to come and try to counter you and kill you before your spire is done. So more often than not, you're going to have to make two sunkins to hold that. If you make a hatch, you won't have money for sunkins. So what this scenario would look like is you would have sunken here, sunken here, spire here, or spire here. And you'd have your eight lings, eight or ten lings defending as well. And you would defend that, and immediately after you defend, you would get your muta out. So you'd get up to like 3 muta, 4 muta, and then you expand. And then you go down here and try to do some damage with muta. And try to make it an even, even game. That's what you do versus 12 pool. Versus 9 pool, it's, it's going to be a situation like in that game that Hexa played um, versus Elevation where they both went 9 pool, they both went into lair, and it's going to come down to who has the better muta micro or the ling micro. In that game, Hexa went out. If you're playing versed over... Uh, yeah, playing versed over gas pool, that's probably the worst situation for you if you're playing 9 pool. Because I think you need to make a spore. And even if you make a spore it's a bad position for you. Um, over gas pool is specifically designed to be a pocket build versus nine pool. If you're playing versus 12 hatch, you that's that's like the uh, hexa versus elevation game one. 
you have two options. You can either kill their hatch, or you can try to go straight into their main and kill a couple of drones. If you go straight into their main, if you go straight into their main and don't kill enough drones or lose all of your links to, to drone micro, you automatically lose the game. You're not coming back from that. If you kill their hatch, then what it ends up being is they're just going to be economically ahead of you. Maybe have one drone, two drones more. Because if you kill their hatch, you're going to kill a couple of these larvae popping because you're going to be microing against that. Um, and then it depends what they do. If they stay here and make a concave or stay on top of their ramp and make a concave and make a sunken at home and just start layer to forget about speed, then you're pretty much in the same position. So as soon as you see them doing that, your overlord will be up here. You see them doing that, you make drones and set up a concave here. And you're even. Like it's pretty much 9 pole versus 9 pole at that point. And it resorts to 9 pole versus 9 pole. If they come down and they lose a lot of lings, then you just keep on making lings and kill them after you kill this hatch. If you go up and kill a couple of drones and then the pool pops, usually you want to come back down and kill this hatch and just like set up a concave here so they can't get down into this part and then the rest of your lings are hitting the hatch and then as soon as the egg starts popping you surround the egg so that these zerglings never like actually do damage and then you just keep on switching between this and this and keep on rallying in more lings so you'll have a couple of lings here to make sure they can't come down and then you'll have a couple of lings here hitting the hatch hitting the eggs so you can't they can't get reinforcements out and eventually kill the hatch but that's much harder to do. Uh, the safer option is definitely to kill the hatch first. That resorts into 9-pole versus 9-pole scenario. And that, that's pretty much 9-pole speed. Versus, like, you really only have a very hard time versus... If you're, if, yeah, if you're not mismicroing. Um, and these are all control builds, right? So it's easy to mismicro. If you're not mismicroing and both players are playing optimally, then the only disadvantage really is if they went over gas pool. Alright, that's that for that. Let's go into Marting's replays. I'm probably not going to do the full replay because I remember this first game was like ridiculously long. Yeah, it's uh, almost an hour long. So let's just take a look at the opening for Marting. So you didn't, he didn't scout with a drone. Marting, you need to scout with a drone. You didn't know where the other player is and what they're opening. So no points for you on scouting. Don't make this hatch up here. Make it over here. I mean, that's if you saw it. There's no point in making it up here. Make it down here. Um, I know we talked about them scanning, right? If they scan to figure out if you're going Muta or Lurker, if you have your, your hatches like this, then it's going to be really hard for them to set up the scans in a way to actually scan your your actual tech. But if the hatch is here, it's still in a good enough position where you can put your tech up here. And they won't be able to... Well, they'll, they'll have a chance of scanning it. They need to guess where to scan. Gas is late. Overmade lings. Overmadelings. 
Right, so this this entire build, I think you're going for, from what I remember, you're going for uh, Lurker Hydra, Hydra Lurker build. Um, you overmade Lynx. I don't know if this was because you didn't find him yet. Um, hard to say. I like greeting with this build. I only like making two Lynx, but maybe this was safer because you didn't find him yet. Let's just hope you don't lose these Lynx. Got Overlord blocked, didn't you? Yeah, you got Overlord blocked. This is why I like only making two lings, because if you make six lings, you have to go micro the lings, and if you don't have the APM to micro the lings, you stop going econ mode. And if you stop going econ mode, then your build is slow. And you don't want your build to be slow. This is first and foremost an economic game. And it's way easier to get ahead in lower tiers of CPL, playing defensively to econ, and just really getting your drones and production facilities up. So we didn't do anything with these lings, so these lings were useless, and I don't know if we have the APM to watch them, so we may lose them. Let's see what we're going on here. Uh, let's get rid of this. So I can see where are we at. This is a good time to start an Overlord. Okay, good. You started an Overlord. Hydra Den should be starting. This second gas was early. No Hydra Den in sight. What is this? Hydra Den started after the layer finished which means your Lurker upgrade is going to be slow. The Lurker upgrade should be starting immediately when the layer is done. we got to clean that up. Luckily, he didn't have any medics yet. He didn't see that cheeky drone. I guess that's fine. You lose this Overlord because you were careless. He loses all his marines, though. If you see this, immediately Lurker all in. You killed eight marines for free. He's... He's done. He's absolutely done right now. If your Lurker was on time, if your Lurker upgrade was on time, it would be finishing about right now. And you'd be morphing lurkers. You'd have five lurkers and then lots and lots of lings. You didn't even lose your lings, really. And he only has one bunker, so he's dead. Um, but yeah, that's the importance of adapting to what's happening and getting your build on time. Getting your upgrades or not. So we talked about this too. All your lurkers are here. You need to have some lurkers here. This is really open to getting pushed. Uh, upgrades didn't start, but we were low on gas. I don't know why we were low on gas. making a second bunker. You're trying to contain him, that's good. He still gets the scout off so he knows where your third is. Right, so everything's late. Um, but at this point in time you need to be droning. You made you overmade units here, so this is this is about the time where you want to drone and you want to add a fifth hatch. Probably want to put the fifth hatch here. Uh, I think for now it'd be better if you take your third here. Close, the close third. I know it's got two ramps; it's harder to defend, but 
you're not really defending this anyway, so might as well make it close so that if he does get in here, you at least have a closer path to run to defend it. Get out of here. You're too close to this. He's gonna scan you. Kill workers for free, yeah. All right, not using your money. Getting a queen's nest down, yeah, that's all good. You mi you missed your drone timing. Um, so any any time the Turan gets about 15 SCVs ahead of you, you're in a bad spot. You missed your drone timing. This is a very economic build and you're getting the lurkers out fast to be able to drone up the third fast. And once you drone up the third fast, then you can go crazy into hide your lurk. You're not really soft containing here because he's able to get out. Honestly, he's got tanks here. Yeah. If we were... Yeah, I don't think he could have attacked into that. He's gonna go and try to kill his third, yeah. That was a decent defense, um, but it ate into your drone count. So he's 15 ahead now. So now we have the the push that comes out a little bit early. We have it coming out now. He's got he's got a lot of he's got a lot of tanks. One, two, three. He's got more tanks than I thought he'd have. He's got about one group here, two groups. Yeah, this is about the size of the push that I was expecting just earlier. You how you're doing on units? You got a decent amount of units. Yeah, this looks good. You can hold this with a good flank. Just under droned. That was a bad attack though. Ideally you want to come in... Ideally you want to come in when the tanks are ensieged and you want to be able to flank in a way that the lurkers are in range of the tanks. So when they burrow they are... Yeah. And then you have the Hydra kind of wherever else in a big concave. Upgrades 1-1. One, one. That was a that was a good flank. This guy is quite good from what I'm seeing. All right. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the rest of the game. I think the main improvements here are is that you under droned because you missed your drone timing, and that you're, there are a couple of things to clean up with the build where lurkers weren't on time. Let's go into the second game. That was good though. Good, good, good. If like, man, if that lurker upgrade was a little bit faster, we could have just lurk ling linked him after he lost like eight marines. And he only had one bunker. I don't think he scanned your main at all, so he doesn't. He didn't really know what you're doing. Speed this up a bit. Normal. 
Not scouting again. Got a drone scout, man. Second game in a row where you're not drone scouting. You need a drone scout. You need to see if he's going gas. You can't hydro lurk first mech. You could hydro verse. You can three hatch hydro, but it's 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 like the mentality is different. You gotta know if he's going gas. You also gotta know if he's not doing something like two racks, one base push or something like that. Yeah, you're not gonna figure that out with a slow overlord scout or eight racks. Yikes, um, too many links here. Same as in game one, you made too many links. Like especially, let's go back here. Pool's almost done now. You're blind you're blindly making six lings. You're blindly making eight lings. That's such a gamble. Don't make lings until you know what he's doing. You should be deciding to all in him with lings like speed before lair based on what you see and not just blindly. Blindly doing it is a gamble. Not a big fan of this run by either. Precisely because this guy is knows what he's doing. And he just handled that like a pro. I mean, we've, we've got three hatch, so we're gonna recover from this pretty easily. But our lair is late, right? Our lair is late, more importantly... Here this. He scouted, yeah. Our lair is late and he scouted because we were too busy microing lings over here. So he knows what our tech is. And since he knows what our tech is, um, I know what happened because I was watching this live. He talked to someone after the first game and asked them how to deal with Hydra Lurk. And they told him how to deal with Hydra Lurk in between games. So now he knows exactly how to counter what build you're doing, and he knows exactly what build you're doing. This is why denying scouting is important with Hydra Lurk. And like usually if I'm playing a series, I don't play Hydra Lurk more than once. If you play Hydra Lurk and they pick up on it and someone tells them how to deal with the way to deal with Hydra Lurk is you sit in your base's terrain and let the Zerg make the mistake and just make tanks and then once you have a lot of tanks like 10 tanks you move out and you kill the Zerg if they don't have Defiler they're dead <laughs> tanks just wreck Hydra Lurk that was a good one by It's okay. I had to make a lot of songs. I think you overreacted. He didn't. He did have okay. Yeah, it's like. What, what happened here? Lurkers should be done by 6 30. So, Lurker upgrade is late again. Okay. Three. Three, three sunks. He's only got two medics. First, the first, the first, first push out. Three sunks is enough. Don't make four. And lurkers are 25 seconds late. Lurker upgrade 25 seconds late. You got six marines for those lings. Maybe it was worth it. I don't know. Expo is slow. I like just putting the drone out on the map earlier because we're so economic. We're, we, we have so many drones, we have so many minerals we can just put out here. I don't like this um, as taking the third here. Uh, then again, I did give you opposite 
advice in the earlier games, so I guess this is fine. Like, this would be the better, like, he goes for this. This would be the better base, or this would be the better base to take on your third. Worker's positioned here. All right, now we got a drone. What's he doing? He's going to factory tank. He's, he's doing, doing exactly what he needs to do. Droning, got good drone count. Get our fifth hatch up. We don't have upgrades going? Ah, uh, we don't have upgrades going. Are you going for drops? I think you're going for drops, yeah. He's starting a third. He's super, he's feeling super confident. Going for drops. A little bit late, I think, on that. No, you, you handled that pretty well. I remember you handled that pretty well. Focus on the Queen's Nest, too. You didn't kill the dropship, though, so he's going to drop again. You just, like, once he drops once and you don't kill the dropship, just kill, just put a couple units here. Yeah, so this is hard. Pretty much, you would need to go to Hive Delay and just do nothing but build units to stop this push. Let's see the third game. I think the third game I remember was a Ling All In. Let's let's talk about your build first, and then we'll switch division to the Turan and see how he figured out that you're gonna ling all in. This all looks fine. Okay, you're a you actually scouted this time, that's good. Yep, that's good. See no gas, that's good. Yeah, this, this hatch position here, in between your bases. This is like way, way far away. The, the rallying is like you're adding you're adding like another screen. It's it's two screens between your natural and his base, and you just added another screen to that. So now these lings have to travel three screens instead of if you put it like down here, it'd be more or less two screens. If you're planning on going ling all in, then you need to make uh, 12 gas. So the gas is late. Okay, it's, it's okay. All right, let's go back and see his vision. What does he see? These three hatch. What a, what what does he see? He sees four lings. He doesn't know it's ling all in. He makes this supply depot just to, to narrow off his choke. So we're in a good spot. Besides the fact that our link speed is late, but you know, 
coming and coming. He doesn't see any lings. Now, let's see. Where does he see here? Oh, he sees a bunch of lings there. Yeah, he, he sees a lot of lings. Now he knows it's ling all in. All right, let's see how, let's put, what are you at? 12, 10, we're at 24, we got, su we got supply blocked. He made three overlords because of that supply block. Two larva, two larva, two larva, three larva. All right. Let's back up. So you got supply blocked. If you didn't get supply blocked, you would have six, you'd have three control groups of lings right now with more coming. So let's see this attack. You have, you actually have so many freaking lings, man. Link speed done. Okay, link speed's done. You're going for it, right? You're, you're like you see, your your lings were glitching out there, right? Lings, he over microed his lings, Dada. Like when I, I saw this, I wanted to like pull all my hair out. Um, he over microed his lings. Um, this happens sometimes with lings. You don't want to overthink it. Right, so these lings were coming in well. These lings were coming in well, and these lings should have gone around here. Um, but you see that really here, instead of A moving, like from here on out, you should have just A moved. But instead of A moving, there are only like really these lings that were attacking. He right clicked here. So all these lings just move in again, which gets free pot shots. Now he's attacking again, but now he's drilling with SCVs. So this messes up these lings. And these lings are the only ones attacking. They clean all of this up. And now, we're watching all this. It's like four lings only attacking. Everything else is like bugged out. And not only now that they start attacking, but the SCVs are in a good spot. It's uh, I think it was only that, that one right click over here at the very start where he was in a good spot, but instead of just hitting attack move or hitting patrol right there, he right clicked all of his groups over here again, like to get the gas. And that one misclick fucked the entire ling up, ling all in up. But still, launch held this really well he drilled really well he had the setup really well everything was really tight so this was a hard ling all in to begin with and he he must have figured out that after last game that that martin was going to be desperate or something for like a ling all in or something um but yeah i, I think that should have worked
Yeah, really good job by Tyrant player holding this. I still think this Lingua all in should have worked, especially if we didn't hit the Overlord block. It would have been goodbye Tyrant player, but you know it is what it is. All right, thanks guys. Um, that's all the replay reviews I'm going to give today. Hopefully that was somewhat useful, and now I'm going to go to sleep.